as Professor uh, Sethi said, that uh, I am not going to teach you anything. We are going to share teaching experiences. We are going to share. I am not only going to share. I need interaction. And sometimes I may do some kind of role play that how I teach my students. So sometimes I may consider you as student. Don't feel bad. I may ask you very simple, stupid questions. Please answer. Yeah, these are the points which we will be covering, myself and my colleague, uh, Dr. Nikhil. Uh, but I'm not going to talk uh, about that just now. Uh, we will revise that once the module is over. See, teaching is art, many people say. Just now, uh, while having lunch also, somebody was like, you know, gossiping. I just overheard that um, everybody can, can't teach like this, the way uh, Sethi sir was delivering. Uh, so teaching is art, definitely. You agree with me? Yes. Yeah, Dr. Sethi has demonstrated that today. Yes or no? Yeah. And the real art is to make complex thing simple as much as possible and by avoiding jargons. How many of you have seen a film of Amir Khan? I will not tell name. Let us see. Three Idiots. Dekha hai na? Machine what he says, how it, he explains. So we believe in making complex things as simple as possible. Usually engineers, I don't know all, but they <laughs> try to make simple thing very complex by adding lots of data and graphs and statistics and so many things. So here we try to make things as simple as possible. I, we discourage them in mugging up like we discourage them, there is no need to mug up facts and figures. And we ensure that education is done through fun. I don't have to actually tell because Dr. Sethi has already done the experiment with everyone. Uh, then uh, we ensure that interaction is happening among students and faculty. Otherwise, what happens usually? One, it is a monologue. So a teacher is talking and some students are sleeping, some boys are looking at some girls, and like uh, there is no involvement. So we in ensure that there is a good involvement among students and faculty. So 60% of the time, students will be talking, and only 40, 30 to 40% of the time, we, we are talking. So mostly, uh, I'll ask why, what, what do you think, what is your opinion? Uh, we involve mostly, I tell stories, films. Today also I'll be showing some documentaries, some video clippings. We also do role plays. If you all are interested, we can do short role play in between. Debates, discussions, etc. This very interesting thing I read somewhere, I thought I should share with you. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. And involve me and I learn. So we also try to involve students in activities. For example, we had conducted a biodiversity survey in our campus, so students were involved in that. 30% of the weightage is given for project work. So students go to different places, outside, even outside Coimbatore, and they do projects related to environment. Sometimes they uh, like interlink with their core subject. Like for example, we also uh, teach this aerospace students. So they had done sustainable aviation uh, industry report. So they studied sustainability report of different aviation industries and they found out uh, uh, one ideal report. They also had uh, done a uh, project on green buildings. That, that they studied green buildings in different areas and they um, made a plan of converting existing building into green building in uh, Amrita. Some people, uh, some students developed a plan for butterfly garden in Amrita. So we try to involve them and make them learn, which uh, nowadays this is a new term, you might have heard that experiential learning. So when you are just telling them facts and figures and lots of jargons and all, they may listen, they may sleep, they may mug up, they may omit an exam, they may get 100 out of 100 marks also, but finally in the next semester they are going to forget. So uh, one more thing, how many of you know uh, the, what is the aim of this, uh, introducing this environmental science into this? Uh, what, why, why UGC wants to introduce environmental science for all UG courses or even engineering? Can anyone tell me? Yeah? Uh, in my view, ma'am, whatever human mankind is doing, 
is only when earth is there yeah and evs is something which relates to that yeah why do we need to generate awareness in a direct way or indirect way or, or human activity, uh, human activity leads to the some changes in environment right. maybe in states in form or for a short duration of times yeah any scale it may some brings about some changes on the natural environment that is why the awareness among all the uh, groups of students is required yeah anything else anybody wants to add to this yeah the youngster who is uh, going to determine the economy of india that is very important they should understand uh, what is the importance of environment then can we then give her a big hand because these youngsters are tomorrow's builders tomorrow's politicians scientists managers so uh, we think that if we generate some kind of awareness or sensitivity in them they may think of this environmental aspect before taking any decision okay so that is why ugc has introduced this subject in all the disciplines not only in uh, engineering but all the ug courses now uh, see i understand that most of the students they are more worried about uh, exam and getting credits and cgpa because that they require for their placement okay i understand that we have to stick to that all rules and exam everything we have to do because that is a part of system yeah but i want you people to motivate students and tell them to look beyond this credits and marks otherwise i just now i told even if they get 100% or 95% marks and if they are not aware about their responsibility towards environment the purpose of introducing environment and ugc will not be served so for that if you want to generate passion or motivation among students for that what is required awareness, awareness is required and the person the teacher who is going to generate awareness has to be really 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 committed and passionate then only he can generate that awareness and passion among students so i think that i am so happy that i am going to talk to this many teachers who can really generate enthusiasm and passion <coughs> and commitment towards environment uh, you can actually make young environmentalists you can produce young environmentalists then only i think that purpose of introducing environmental science or studies in ug course will the purpose will be served otherwise it will be just like any other subject you study again write exam get points and then forget about it so that is not that should not be the purpose okay another thing environmental science is bit neglected in most of the engineering colleges and uh, many times different uh, teachers from different disciplines they teach environmental studies and uh, sometimes they may not uh, take interest so i am going to show you actually how we start the lecture how we motivate students how like to start a course i believe that uh, first lecture is very important uh, if you generate interest in them then they they won't then you really don't have to take attendance they will come yeah okay one more thing i recently did mba when i was with godrej there my professor uh, used to tell us that we all have to become seven year old child you forget that because we uh, we did we were managers and like uh, some vice president everybody know so many people they did they say you forget that you are manager or you are in charge of this mangro center or that center or that you you have to become seven year old child what is difference between seven year old child and 20 year old uh, student curiosity because seven year old child every time even if you may in your house you can experience if you have your son daughter or for everything whatever information you give them they ask but why but why asaka tasaka right right or wrong so i want all of you to forget about your positions that you are assistant professor whatever associate professor professor i am also going to forget about my designation and we are going to learn we are going to unlearn what is written and what is because some iit or amruta or whatever professor is telling this is right should not be the approach we are going to open up our minds and going to ask that why okay and mostly in my all my lectures i allow them okay what do you think what is biodiversity but why but why i ask them they answer so this is the method we follow 
Now, just to start uh, like motivation or inspiring talk, uh, I usually show this video. There is also video, uh, one full uh, video called Home by Jan Arthur. If you type Jan Arthur and Home, you can download it from YouTube. And uh, it is a very nice and usually the first assignment what I give is, you have to not see, but study video and uh, write assignment. I usually tell them to make PPTs. And as he said many a times they copy, they copy and what they do, you know, they just change that format. So they think that I'm not reading, I'm, I don't have time to read some 60 presentations. So they, but, but at the same time, there are very genuine cases, they do a really nice presentation. So you should not just generalize. So what is happening, what this video shows? I'm just going to act as if I'm talking to my students, okay, for five, 10 minutes. What is this video shows? Yeah, how we are impacting on the uh, environment. It shows that she's alive, yeah, she's unique. She's finite, she's complex, she's diverse. She's supporting variety of life. We cannot live without her support. But what is happening? She's hurt, she's crying. Why she's crying? Because her children are becoming more and more greedy. They want more, more, I want more. I want more buildings, I want more cars, you know. I don't want car, I want car. I want more industries, more shirts. How many saris you have? How many we need? Okay, we'll discuss it later about this. <laughs> yeah. What is our actual need and what is our want, we'll discuss. So she is crying. She is actually, we cannot live without her support. And she's hurt, she's crying, she's very sad. Why? Because a group, one group of her children called Homo sapiens, means human being, is becoming more and more greedy. He wants more, 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 everything more. And another thing, their number is also increasing. They are becoming more, right sir? They are becoming so more that she is not able to support her children. She is not able to provide what is required to all the children. Maybe few children she is able to support. Third thing, she is again sad because one group of her children is dominating other group of her children, animals and plants. They are exploiting. See, I use this slide to explain that human beings used to live in harmony with nature. Slowly they became uh, dependent on agriculture, they start, they discovered agriculture, they were using water, rain fed agriculture or surface water or rivers, slowly they started uh, dug, uh, digging wells, means they started using underground water and then their dependence on fossil fuels because they wanted energy and industrialization and uh, uh, consumer goods, their dependence on consumer goods increased more and more energy for transport, for industrialization, for more industries, for more houses, for luxury, for greed. Population, our population is ever increasing. And her third problem is what we all think. Solution to all these problems, to poverty, to population growth, what is the solution? Economic development and industrialization is the only answer. Do you agree with me? How many of you think that the problem of population growth or food insecurity or whatever problems we have now, our earth is crying, we are, whatever is happening for that, most of the uh, like people think that economic development and industrialization is the only solution or all politicians say that we cause. All, any, any politician you say. I just want to tell you one more thing. Just want to elaborate. Suppose industrialization is the answer for everything. Okay? Can we produce food in factories? Can we have factories of bananas, chikus, sabata, uh, wheat factory? Can we have? No, we have to depend on nature. The simple process called photosynthesis which happens in leaf, we can't 
emit in laboratory. Though we think that we are so much advanced, we have uh, like, you know, we are going to Mars and the moon and wherever and we have got so many advanced laboratories, a simple process or technology which is known as photosynthesis, we cannot mimic in laboratory. If we can mimic that, we really don't have to need we, uh, land. We don't have to do agriculture. We can just have factories of everything. So I just want to stress that nature is supreme. So, uh, so many other things. Formula of blood. Can we make artificially uh, do blood, make blood in laboratories? If we can do that, then do we don't have to do uh, blood donation. We don't have to do camps for blood donations. Mother's milk formula so far, nobody has successfully done in laboratory. So I just want to tell you again that we should tell our students that whatever modern technology and whatever engineer you are going to become, the what mother nature has engineered, we cannot really play with that. Because we are not capable to do that. And what we are not capable to do, we don't have any right to destroy that. Yeah. So I wanted to tell you whatever we are going to teach them, first of all, we need to generate some kind of, you know, passion among them and tell that how important it is, how it is linked with our life. Yeah. There are so many other wonders in nature, like migratory birds, how they travel, how they identify the same spot. You know, here Shivdi uh, in Mumbai, flamingos come. Every year they come to the same spot. That Bombay Natural History Society has done some experiment. They have uh, tagged, uh, like re ringing they call, banding. They have done. Same flamingo comes back. Thousand and thousand miles they travel. There are so many other things. Butterflies, they, they have some optical prism technology for uh, color. How snake, snakes movement without legs. How lizard walks on the wall. Energy efficiency of electric rays. So many wonders are there in nature, which we are still not aware. There is so much to learn from nature. For example, energy efficiency. Okay, uh, many people think, okay, you here in this forum, many people do not think that uh, development is not an answer. But due to this modern development, are we happy? Why we are not happy? We have got big bungalows, big cars big industries, but still we are not happy. Okay, let us see what are the impacts of modern development. Uh, I know most of you are aware about all these things, but I am telling that when you are uh, making a beginning of the course, if you generate this kind of awareness, it will have a great impact. Than just telling lots of figures and jargons and facts. Hmm? See, we know impacts of modern development. We do not have enough water to drink. 80 countries of the world suffer from serious water. All these facts and figures I talk. Air pollution. One billion people in the world breathe unhealthy air. So I tell them soon how we carry this drinking water bottle. You have to carry one cylinder and walk. This is mainly to understand that why you have to study environment and how it is linked with sustainability global warming, I give them facts and figures. Soon, I say, soon cities like Mumbai will go underwater. And they are going. Sundarban is, many islands are sinking. It is not. Now here I actually show uh, usually one film uh, made by WWF that how Sundarban uh, is sinking and how this climate change is affecting uh, environment. But uh, because of time constraint, I'll show you at the end if we get time because I want to do so many activities with you. We are also going to do skit, okay? Same thing like currently what is the level and there is soon no point of return. How the impact of global warming, cyclones, hurricanes, flood, famine, vector borne diseases, loss of forest, islands in Sundarban is sinking, all these facts site we tell them penguin population and how species are moving towards pole. This is what's happened recently in Uttarakhand. Hunger, one billion people suffer from hunger. And we discuss mainly about industrialization of agriculture. 
what we call modern technology and how it is affecting, how like we uh, speak about farmer suicide in my third lecture that uh, food, I'm going to show some uh, film on uh, this farmer suicide actual case in Vidarbha. How green revolution, we think like industrialization of agriculture, green revolution, how it has impacted our agriculture and how people are committing suicide and how it has led to more food insecurity. Pesticide pollution, how many of you are aware about this, Kerala people? You are aware about this endosulfan case, but still it is not banned. Now there is uh, one train running from Bhatinda to Bikaner. You know uh, which states uh, green revolution was uh, prominently practiced? Punjab and Haryana. So now uh, they have started one train from Bhatinda to Bikaner which carries only cancer patients. Deforestation, this is as per the recent report from WWF, Living Planet Index, we have lost 52% of biodiversity. I also give them exercise that they have to read recent reports that Living Planet Index 2014, a very good report it is. So they have to read that report and make some short, uh, like from the key learnings PowerPoint presentation. So we make sure that they are not stuck with the textbookish knowledge. They know what is happening in current uh, environment. Also one interesting assignment we give them that we tell them that for, uh, for two to three months, they have to read newspaper, which usually they don't, even we don't, yeah. And uh, read newspaper and they have to uh, collect news regarding environment. And they have to make one book. And by reading that, they also have to make presentation. So we make sure that they read that. To understand, because once uh, in one of my lecture, I asked them that, what is your expectation? They say, we know all this global warming. We are studying from third standard, they say. OK, anybody is aware about what is therapeutic po pollution? Vultures are dying. Yeah, why vultures are dying? Yeah, antibiotic plus some ointments called diclofenac. So uh, I will describe this in more detail when I teach ecology and biodiversity that when something you are doing artificial in environment to one species, how it is affecting to other species. See, this diclofenac drug was used for cattle and human beings. And because that drug has got severe impact on vultures now, we do not have vultures. You know uh, what is significance of vultures in, uh, in any culture? They are scavengers, but there is some religious importance in one community. Are you aware about that? Parsi community. Parsi. What is that? Can you tell, sir, loudly? Basically, take the dead bodies and allow the vultures to eat it. To so eat that, that because they believe in a natural thing. They don't burn or they don't bury. And in Mumbai, there is a tower of silence yes, yes. where they do that. What is happening there, you know? Dead bodies are just lying like that and they are waiting for vultures. There are no, no vultures. Okay. Living Planet Index 2014. Already I spoke about this. We have lost 39% of terrestrial species, 76 of freshwater, and 39 marine species. We have already lost them during 1972-2010. I recommend that all of you must read this report and also encourage your students to read this report and uh, tell them to make short uh, documentary, whatever. We all know importance of forest. One more thing I wanted to tell you, whatever you get free of cost, you don't have value for that. If you get pure air free of cost, you get water free of cost, okay? So UN had made one study and they calculated ecosystem, now forest from where uh, water comes, from where pure air comes, you all are aware, right? So they calculated ecosystem services globally and they could find that per year ecosystems provide 70 trillion dollars worth services. Mistake, I will explain this in more detail when we study ecosystem and ecology topic. Hope I'm, you understand. Yeah. So these facts I tell them that we are losing 300 square kilometer of rainforest that is one acre per second, loss of biodiversity. And we are also adding something. We are adding 
टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पीपल पर डे वी आर एडिंग फिफ्टी मिलियन टन्स ऑफ कार्बन पर डे फिफ्टी मिलियन कार्बन टन्स ऑफ कार्बन सी एफ सीज दिस इज एंडेंजर्ड इंडियन लाइफ वाइल्ड लाइफ इन इंडिया दिस ऑल्सो आई विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल इन बायोडाइवर्सिटी चैप्टर नॉइस पोल्यूशन की की कुकू या यू कैंट इवन स्लीप वेल can you guess what is this this is a very common picture i think many of you must might have seen this ha water huh? hyacinth water hyacinth okay people ha huh? people right what else use and throw culture okay we are blindly following modern or so called western or whatever developed culture whatever we go to malls also everything is packed we don't know where it is goes there is a very nice video called story of stuff we get if we get time we will screen that okay land pollution waste generation where this uh, pollu uh, waste goes any idea whatever waste is generated mainly domestic waste yeah dumping ground we don't have even area for our, our buildings and most of the areas dumping grounds are also now overflowing so are we happy we don't have pure air we don't have pure water many of us we don't have enough food we have got many different kinds of diseases horrible diseases like cancer some of our babies are abnormal we are not able to sleep properly because of sound pollution and lots of disasters are happening which they seems to be natural disasters but they are man made disasters we are responsible for those disasters do you agree with me so we are not happy why we are not happy because our wants are more natural resources are limited and our wants are unlimited what is difference between wants and need we are going to study what mahatma gandhi says earth has enough for everybody's need but not for everybody's greed okay i will tell you it is not enough whatever you see if i have one car i uh, one small house i want big bungalow if i have one bhk i want two bhk i may uh, like get more guess i want three bhk i want independent bungalow i want uh, small car i have i want big car there is no limit to it if i have 50 sarees i have want 100 i want matching earrings there is no you may ask me that what is your problem i have got enough money i can buy how many cars i want i can have how many bungalows i want what is your problem my problem is everything is coming from from where it is coming nature, nature. and resources are limited and our wants are unlimited one example of unlimited want is i don't want to take name but people are having helicopter to go from one floor of their house to upper floor so that is the i want to i don't want to blame anyone but that that kind of mentality and attitude we have and unless we change that whatever sustainability topic you teach in an environmental science course whatever you offer this is not going to change so unless you ba address basic problem or root cause of the problem we are not going to achieve sustainability and again and again i want to tell uh, you people that our purpose is not only giving them marks why ugc has introduced this syllabus we need to understand and we have to somehow try to make some change attitudinal change right among ourselves and students okay now uh, th this is one activity this you can try in your uh, colleges now people talk about so many problems uh, greenhouse gases our planet is sinking 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 soon it is going to sink seti sir told that so much co2 in atmosphere green house gases are there in atmosphere because of global warming now our planet is sinking it is sinking within 5 minutes okay 10 minutes it is sinking within 10 minutes and since your minister is from your hometown and he also wants to take all his supporters to another uh, planet he has organized one spaceship for you because he he cares for you 
okay. So, within 10 minutes you have to take 15 things, you have to pack and go. So, what all 15 things you will take, you please write down. You have only 1 minute, okay, 2 minutes. No copying. No copying, fast. <laughs> food, water. food, everybody agree, yeah. Water, Dress. yeah. If any personal belongings for the memories. Okay, personal <laughs> belongings for the memories, okay. Uh, and uh, some of the valued things. Uh, uh, which uh, matters me. For or, example, uh, tell, see, I, I don't want any philosophical answer. Now you are doing. I am taking necklace of my wife. Like that you tell. Like that. Yeah. Bas itna hi. Are ye to ekdam. Anybody who has full list of 15 things. Yeah. But whatever you take, one find it, get, it will get over. Huh. Air, water, everything. Yeah. So carry mobile. Mobile. <laughs> and from mobile, how can you get water? You are going to another planet. You, your mobile range will not work there. Anybody 15? Yeah. Soil in a pot, oxygen cylinder. Soil in a pot, yeah. Oxygen cylinder, water bottle, seeds of plants, food, clothes, medicines. Hmm. And um, I think uh, my child. <laughs> okay, yeah, that you will anyhow take. <laughs> and my husband. <laughs> that they will come independently. And a few books to read. Yeah. Actually, uh, when I tell this exercise to students, that list will be too big. Okay, they write all what all you told, food and this thing, that thing. They also tell that um, mobile, there uh, some. Yeah, whatever equipments, laptop, so many things, okay. So, out of that 20 things, I tell them to strike 5 things because cargo is, uh, can't accommodate all the things, okay. Then I tell them to take only 5 things. So, first itself you are telling only 5 things, so I don't know, uh, really your needs are low or, but whoever has done full 15 list can strike out 10 things and ultimately what 5 remains is your actual need. And what 15 first you listed is your want. This is just to make concept clear that what is difference between need and greed. Okay. Okay. Now next to uh, somebody where I was talking about happiness. What do you mean by what is difference between standard of living and quality of life? Can anyone tell? Standard of living and quality of life. What is difference? Quality of life is bringing happiness. Yeah. Whatever you are having within that. It's a contented life. Yeah. No, whatever you are having, you are very satisfied and oh, enjoying whatever. your life. And what is standard of living? Standard of living to show to others. I am right. having a bungalow, I am having a big car, I am having that. And yeah. Show thing. to others and you are also enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. All together, if I combine your own answers, I can say that standard of life is material well-being. Like what he said, I have got good bungalow, good car, lots of clothes and good salary and... Uh, like uh, standard of living and quality of life is I have minimum things with which I can live happily at the same time I have got good air to breathe if I am staying in a polluted city I will not have that I have got fresh water I have got healthy food healthy food without poison we are going to talk about that in our food topic like what kind of food presently we are eating it is actually slightly having poison. If I say this, you will think what, what rubbish you are talking. But literally, pesticide is nothing but poison. Okay. So, when you are having good food, without poison, good air, good quality of water and air, good atmosphere, when you feel nice, when you are in IIT campus, you feel good. There is a greenery. There is something called peace of mind. Tranquility. Peace of mind is very, very important for happiness. You are very rich, but you are not able to sleep. Okay. At the same time, you have got good social circle. You are also thinking about others. You are not selfish. So, they also think about you. You have got, you are a part of community. You share things with each other. You have got lots of friends. So, understand what is difference between standard of life and standard of living and quality of life and we should go for quality of life or standard of living? <coughs> quality of life. 
uh, previously people only used to talk about GDP, okay, gross uh, domestic productivity, which is only how much economic growth is happening in different countries. But now people have found out different index that is called Happy Planet Index. Just now what we discussed, it calculates life expectancy, means how long you are living. Okay, you can live long only you have healthy lifestyle. At the same time, experience the well-being, what we spoke just now, and your ecological footprint is low. If your ecological foot, we will discuss what is ecological footprint. I think most of you know. If you, your ecological footprint is high, if you are creating more impact on environment, your existence itself will be in question because Earth cannot, you are, cannot survive for long time, right? So Happy Planet Index takes care of your life expectancy, your well-being at the same time, your reduced ecological footprint. See ecological footprint, already globally our ecological footprint is more than our biocapacity. What is ecological footprint? Area that is required to supply the amount of natural resources that is food, water, fuel, fiber, land. We are dependent on nature for all these things. Forest we need to absorb carbon dioxide or pollution. Okay? And what is biocapacity? The amount of biological productive land and sea area that is available. So what is available and what is what we need, okay. So we are exceeding what we need than what is available, okay. So here I have written one exercise on carbon footprint calculator, but actually there is not much time. So I will share that with you uh, during our next program. So there is a carbon calculator through which you can calculate your carbon footprint, means how much carbon is generated due to your day-to-day -day actions. There are uh, even uh, like uh, EMC Mumbai has developed one website. There are so many things you can, you yourself can search and give that exercise. That exercise will help them to calculate their carbon footprint. Means how much carbon is generated due to their day to day actions like cooking, like transport, different things. So they will understand how much carbon is generated due to their activities. So we are overshooting the bio capacity. So soon we will require one and a half planet but we have only one planet there is only one planet on which life can exist huh? if something happens in Madhya Pradesh you may go to Punjab but here something if happens if something happens in India you go to US but here if something happens to our planet we don't have any other planet to escape <coughs> these figures also you can show them how much is our ecological footprint and what is bio capacity it is measured in global hectare Planetary boundaries, uh, this was a recent, recently 28 internationally renowned scientists, they came together and they identified and quantified the first uh, nine planetary boundaries. Actually idea is that within which humanity can continue to develop and thrive for generation, that is your limit, something like threshold, okay. And if you cross that, you will have irreversible environmental damage. So already we have exceeded biodiversity loss boundary, you can see that red one, and nitrogen pollution boundary. <coughs> These two, atmospheric uh, aerosol and chemical pollution yet not ca calculated, climate change you see, we are almost crossing, ocean acidification and all are oh, not that problematic, but biodiversity loss we have already crossed the boundary. Okay, one more thing uh, you can tell your students that there is a huge disparity between developed and developing countries. Why? Why it is like that? Why demand is not even? Huh? Standard of, Standard of living, right. Consu their uh, mindset, their lifestyle, they consume more. Uh, so their ecological put uh, footprint per capita is high, per person is high. It is high means it is five times more than low income countries. See low income countries have small footprint but problem is they suffer from ecosystem loss because they are dependent on ecosystem or for certain reasons they are uh, destroying ecosystem also there is a decline in biodiversity. But here you see high income countries per capita footprint is very 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 high five times high but somehow they have managed to protect their ecosystems. 
and but what they do they import resources from developing countries okay but one message you can give to your students that though developed countries have already developed we are not going to follow that path because for us development is not material well being okay we are not going to follow the wrong path and whatever is happening whatever actions we are taking and whatever impact is happening is ha going to happen universally so we are not going to follow the wrong path set by developing countries because whatever is going to happen to environment is ha going to happen universally global climate change cannot happen only to one country maybe there is micro level some changes may happen okay so what should we do you you may have the similar question then what do you think that we need all minimum lights minimum uh, things can we go back to forest and leave no no we can't because there is answer for which we are here to study that module is called sustainable development the development which meets the need of present generation without compromising the needs of future generation okay development with minimum impact on environment okay there will be some impact we cannot uh, go without impact but we have to take care where there is a minimum impact on environment inclusive development usually what happens uh, in our country or many countries development happen to only only few people get benefited creamy layers okay only corporates or few other people but here sustainable development talks about inclusive development development of all the sectors of society see sustainable development takes care of economic it uh, uh, says when you are having economic growth at the same time there has to be social development economic development with minimum impact on environment or environment protection okay so these three pillars of sustainable development you must teach them you must be teaching also yeah but uh, one step i'll go ahead and tell you what will happen if we do not take care of environment will that uh, uh, development will be sustainable why it will not be sustainable no quality resources forget sir there will be no resources yes okay this okay before this story i'll just explain this and then go to story see we depend on nature or environment for all our resources whatever you say for air water food medicine shelter whatever you name it it comes from environment even agriculture wild varieties were there in a forest and then we started doing agriculture so entire our life human beings existence is depending on environment if there is no environment there are no people we are also part of environment though we think that we are something superior but which is not true we are very much part of environment we are just a part of environment so if there is no environment there is no society if there is no society there is no question of economy so i personally like this model and support this model yes even up to this people are coming we are happy there should be balance between economy environment and society but ultimately if you are destroying environment you your existence and economy will be in question so unless you protect environment and ecosystem society. you are nowhere there is forget development uh, sustainable there is no development you are not there maybe it may take time but that is the truth okay i'll just tell you one story dhanu i just want to tell you that what we say about development and how it is dhanu is a small town people were living very happily there dhanu is one eco sensitive area 60% of the area is under forest 70% of the population is of tribal and it's a very beautiful landscape one side there is a western ghat hills forest and other side there is sea and creeks so this was declared as eco sensitive area and people were living happily there they were doing agriculture horticulture mainly dependent on chikku mangoes and fishermen were there they used to do fishing tribals either they used to collect forest products from forest or they used to work in chikku wadis okay and uh, they were very rich they used to supply food 
mainly fresh vegetables, mangoes, chikkus and fish to Mumbai. And Dhanu used to be called as fruit or food bowl of Mumbai. Okay. Even they used to do this uh, nachni, millets and other things. Okay. Suddenly what happened? Few BSES industry, they thought of starting industry in 1986. Okay. And local environmentalist, four or five people, they opposed. But uh, people were given uh, hope that if industry comes, means there will be development and you will get job and uh, vikas ho jayega, area ka progress ho jayega. Okay. And this industry came into existence. That time nobody had. They got a clearance, but there were some three clearance conditions that they have to leave certain distance from the seashore. Uh, creek and seashore and they have to run it on gas. Gas is a cleaner fuel, not on coal. Sir was talking about coal in the morning. Yeah? And they have to, uh, if they are running on coal, they have to uh, fix flue gas desulfurization plant. So they violated all the three conditions and local people also were not much aware about what is happening. Local people never got job there because they said that they want skilled workers. So they hired skilled workers uh, and after 10-15 years what happened slowly chiku production, sapota production dropped to 70 percent. There was a reduction in sapota and man mango production by 70 percent. And then people started thinking that what happened and then their studies were conducted. I was part of that study that then uh, Salim Ali Center also had conducted some study. I was working that time there. We conducted a local survey, questionnaire survey, why it is happening, what. And I will just cut it short. It was found that because of sudden rise in temperature, pest incidences were high, that lots of fly ash was falling on stigma and leaves of these plants, so production had reduced. Plus, even health incidences had asthma and all there was rise. Now, people, those people were living happily some 10, 15 years ago, they understood that why it is happening. When they, uh, activists told them, environmentalists, they did not realize. But when their pockets were hit, they understood that it can be because of this industry. Again, they had a plan to expand it further. Uh, this BSCS was then bought by Reliance and they had plan to expand it further. That time people started opposing because they understood that their pockets are here. This thing, uh, tribals did not have job, farmers did not have chikus, fishermen did not have fish because these people used to release hot water in and they used to dump fly ash, bottom ash in creek. So whatever, uh, you know that fly ash and bottom ash will have lots of uh, heavy metals and uh, arsenic and mercury and many things. So that fish also may, must be poisoned and uh, fish production was reduced. <coughs> People's health was damaged when we went to some authorities for time. Though, one more thing I forgot to tell. These activist people, they had gone to Supreme Court and they had got orders after orders to stop this uh, because they had not uh, followed clearance conditions. They had not. Uh, but you know, in India, what happens? Though there are laws, though there are Supreme Court orders, implementation does not happen because there was no political will. So finally people came together, people also came together only they realized that damage has already happened and when their pockets were hit, when they were in financial crisis, then we had a big morcha and everything and finally that expansion is stopped and they have put FGD plant. So I just want to tell that there are so many this kind of examples. Such a power plant? Yeah. And, huh, and one more thing, power for whom? For Mumbai, Mumbai, because Mumbai's all factories and industries have, they, they can't uh, afford to stop even for one minute. So to get non-stop power to Mumbai, who has to suffer? Poor people, poor farmers, all farmers may not be poor, that time they were very rich, some Parsi farmers, farmers, tribals, fishermen, they have to sacrifice. So can we call this development as a sustainable development? So this kind of stories, if you tell them, people will understand difference between modern development and sustainable development. 
Huh? How we can have a inclusive development? You know that Nar Narmada Bachao, what is happening? Huge displacement of people and forest area. Okay, forest is going underwater, environment is uh, damaged, and people uh, uh, livelihood is not taken care. Can we call this that as a sustainable development? Not. <laughs> See, there has to be balance, and immediately I'm not be able to uh, give you answer. But there, there is some mechanism called environmental management uh, and uh, EIA studies. So they uh, see that what is the actual impact of any uh, any project on environment, and accordingly. Otherwise, then see we cannot do any uh, development. So there has to be proper balance. Suppose if you think that some other site can be more useful like which useful in the sense there there can be less environmental damage then you can go there for example some uh, nava shiva Shivdi, nava shiva link was uh, coming here that uh, and that time it was going to disturb flamingo habitat but instead but you you need link at the same time if you just little bit turn maybe you have to spend little more money you can also uh, save flamingo habitat Okay, not protecting ecosystem is like sitting on the branch like shake chili and cutting the same branch. You can give this example to your students. I want to show this video. Because of time constraint, you can show it, I will share with you. But there is a solution as we said, like we can conserve natural resources uh, through people's action. I will talk about uh, sometimes in my next lecture about what is Chipko moment and Silent Valley moment. These were the two successful, though Narmada we could not get much success. There are different solutions like watershed man management and wastewater treatment. I think my colleague Dr. Nikhil will speak more about this and different other aspects. Yeah, and renewable energy. There are very good examples in Arizona, in US, and even Dharnai village, that is self-sustained village in India. Sustainable farming, I'll talk in my food topic. Bhutan is the most green and happy country uh, uh, because they have, people think that organic farming is not uh, sustainable, uh, like it is not feasible, but they are, are doing 100% organic farming. Sustainable business, now corporates are coming up with this green technology, green building, waste minimization, product life cycle approach and many uh, corporates are writing sustainability report because they also care for their green image and in the process they also like you know, save lots on energy and water consumption and many other things. Yeah, so, so towards the solution as I said conservation of natural resources, controlling uh, po population because everything has got carrying capacity. We are, have already exceeded our uh, bio capacity. Sustainable lifestyle, I have got a very nice story about Buddha, but I will tell you some other time when I, like next lecture somewhere, I will try to uh, fix it, yeah. Reduce, reuse, recycle, if you tell that uh, story, uh, students will be more. And uh, this aspect also, like I already told that human beings think that we are supreme and everything is under our control but this is not correct we are just part of this nature or universe and if we try to break nature cycle our life our existence itself in question we need attitudinal change because this thing i want to tell you that usually we think only about us we need to think about our neighbors neighboring countries uh, we there should be a proper attitudinal change then only we can achieve Sustainability. Uh, here, our chancellor's photo I have put. She says that Loka Samasta Sukhina Bhavantu means everybody should be happy. And uh, one concept we strongly support is Vasudevam Kutumbakam. Unless we have that attitude, we are not able to achieve sustainability. Uh, I don't have too much time to explain, but uh, sometimes I will show you that film uh, in that the concepts are very nicely explained. Neuro's case, I'm trying to show you during fourth day huh, of food chapter. This is a very nice thing. You can read it. Anthropologist proposed a game to the kids in an African tribe. He puts a basket full of fruit near a tree and told them that whoever goes first uh, will uh, win more sweet. 
fruits, but they all uh, went together uh, as a team and they had fruits because they asked, hey, what is this? They said it is a Ubuntu. Ubuntu is I am because we are. So it was very touching thing I felt and I put it here. Ah, this kit, uh, now there is no time. So what I uh, tell uh, that you are staying in uh, uh, same place, right? So you can form a group of uh, 10, 10 people, those who are interested. 10, 10 volunteers from, or shall I tell now itself? Or you will form three groups at least. One from this, one from this, and one from this. So you can take that any industry is coming in your area. You must be, you must do, sir. Who, that Jaitapur. Who had, uh, ah, you must do this kit. Jaitapur, uh, you have to do on Jaitapur only. Okay. One power, uh, any industry is coming and it is going to have impact on uh, ecology of your area, on forest river. But at the same time, you have to find out solution. We cannot say no to development. So how uh, sustainably you can manage? This is the theme of this kit. I had a whole like list of this, but because of time constraint, I could not uh, explain, uh, give more time to solutions uh, and I gave more time on problem and issue like you know. And uh, during this biodiversity and food topic and energy and water topic, we are going to address solution. This is not the end, this is just beginning. Uh, Dr. Nikhil will be talking on water and energy, they, that time he will address solutions. I will be talking on food crisis, that time we will talk more about solutions. I am going to talk about ecology and biodiversity. This is just a beginning, okay. Great. Policy and governance I have already addressed, though we have pro-environmental policies. We First, we should have pro-environmental policy. Second thing, implementation should, should happen. And that can happen only when there is awareness and people's pressure. Not a single political party in our country has environment as a major agenda. So that can happen only when there is awareness among masses and when masses push our politicians to think about environment. These are some people who have taken uh, action to protect our environment. This also whenever I get time, next time I will talk. There are some organizations in environment. These solutions, summary of solutions uh, from WWF's report. Finally, I asked this question to my students. What is your role? Okay, we discussed about problems and solutions. What can you do? Okay, and uh, are you ready to become young environmentalist ambassador of change? We know where we want to be, we know how to get there. Now we need to get moving. This is our students. Thank you. It's high time to take action and together we can make a big difference. Only together. <laughs>